Hey, my friend, I've got an exciting video for you right here, right now, with the, the title of You Protect What is Valuable. We know that we protect what is valuable. So when we're talking about boundaries, we're talking about protection, and we're here protecting what's valuable. Well, what's valuable? You! You are extraordinarily valuable. Oh my goodness, this is one of the key remedies to setting healthy boundaries is recognizing just how valuable you are. Because one of life's principles that we know is that you protect what's valuable. Think about it. When you think about the difference between the level of security and protection around a bank versus the dry cleaner, which of those has more protection, safety measures, and boundaries? Well, of course, it's the bank because we know what's in there is so valuable. The dry cleaner, on the other hand, at best has half clean clothes. So you go in there and you clear out a, a dry cleaner. Well, half of you, what you just took home in your as in part of your theft was a bunch of dirty laundry. But at a bank, that you're taking what you're taking upon is the immense value. So of course, it's going to have security guards, cameras sensors, lasers, safes, combinations, you name it, bulletproof glass, is that the list goes on and on and on because what's in there is valuable. Well, the same goes for you, that you are way more valuable than a bank. You are way more valuable than the vault of the bank because you don't just have cash, you have the spirit of a living God inside of you that. It's not just man-made money and materialism in there and currency, but inside of you. But you were made and crafted and created by God himself. You're a child of God. Like, what? So this is a, a truth that I want you to grasp here, is that here's the equation for setting boundaries. The greater the recognized value, the greater need for boundaries and protection. The lesser the recognized value, the less need for boundaries and protection. So the answer to establishing greater boundaries and protection for yourself in dating is to begin with recognizing more and more your immense value in Christ. So that's the key to establishing healthy boundaries. Because the reality is, is that the people that struggle the most with boundaries in relationships are the people that struggle with their sense of God-given value, worth, and dignity. Is that when people have a low self-esteem and low self-worth, they're going to have very few boundaries in dating and relationships. Because one, they don't recognize the value that they have and that they bring to the table. And two, because of that, they're trying to seek out value from another person and from a relationship. And that's when the people-pleasing sets in and the sexual gratification sets in because they have a lacking within. So we want to be able to establish and deeply root and understand just how valuable you are. And here's some of the scripture. We already read some of the scripture. I'm going to read you some more and even repeat what we already read. But 1 Corinthians 6.15, don't you realize that your bodies are parts of Christ? That's crazy. Parts of Christ himself. 1 Corinthians 6.19, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You don't belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so imagine this. Think about if you were doing an archaeological dig and you found the Ark of the Covenant from the Jewish tradition in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant, which you know housed essentially the Spirit of God. It housed the Ten Commandments. It housed uh, uh, the the staff that was that was budding, and and it housed some manna as a remembrance. If you were to find that Ark of the Covenant, think about how valuable that would be. Think about how much you could sell that for. 
you'd instantly be ridiculously wealthy, completely set for generations because of the value. Why? Because it housed God's presence. Well, guess what? You house God's presence. And it's not, uh, and this is, um, I just want to give you something to think about here because I think sometimes we, we're all about feelings. Well, I don't feel like the temple of, of a living God. Well, I don't feel God's spirit or presence. And Reinhard Bonnke, the great evangelist, he was a German evangelist to Africa. And he saw in the neighborhood of like over 50 million people be saved through his evangelism. Well, he was writing on the topic of the Holy Spirit. And he gave this illustration that I'll never forget because he said, and he likened it to this. He said, you know, a millionaire. He said, take a millionaire for an example. Well, a millionaire doesn't carry their millions of dollars with them at all times. They don't always feel the millions of dollars that they have. But here's the thing, that they always have access to the million dollars. And he was comparing that to the Holy Spirit. He says, you're not always going to feel it. He even gave an example of how he was at a huge crusade where they were doing it in open air, like in in a a giant evangelism outreach in a huge open field with over a million people present in the physical before him. He's about to walk up on stage to preach the word of God. And he said, sometimes I wouldn't feel the anointing. I wouldn't feel the Holy Spirit. But he said, you know what I did? I stepped out in courage and I appropriated the Holy Spirit. I stepped out knowing the truth. I wasn't allowing myself to be led by feelings. I was allowing myself to be led by truth. So even though I didn't feel the Holy Spirit, I knew that the truth was that he's there, that he's in me, that his spirit is alive and well. And I'm going to step out and walk in that truth. That's what this is about, is that you're not always going to feel it. And we put way too much emphasis on feeling and not enough emphasis on the truth. So step into the truth. It goes on into saying, and here's the truth that I want to read about you. In in Genesis 1.27, says that, So God created human beings in his own image. You were made in the image of God. You know, there's an interesting scripture where... Uh, Jesus is approached by the Pharisees and the Pharisees are trying to trap him as they always did. And they said, you know, should we pay tax to Caesar? They, of course, were wanting him to, to say no and then trigger the response from Caesar and all the things that would fall out. But instead, Jesus says, well, uh, do you have a coin? He asked for a coin. So they give him a coin and he says, whose image is engraved on this coin? They said Caesar's. And so I always imagine him doing the old thumb flip with the coin, shooting it back over to him and saying, well, then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. Well, when I read that, I connected that with Genesis 127. God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And so when Jesus says, about the coin, whose image is engraved on this. Then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, give to God what belongs to God. He was saying that we have God's image engraved on our heart. Give the coin and the tax to Caesar. Give your hearts and your image and all that you are to God because you are sealed and engraved with the image of God on your very life. That's the truth. That's the value. We protect what's valuable. You protect yourself with these boundaries. Why? Because you're valuable. And then Zechariah 1.14, and in this, uh, it, it says this. I'll just read it. Then the angel said to me, shout this message for all to hear. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. My love for you, Judea or Jerusalem, is passionate and strong. And when I read that, I felt like that's the message God put on my heart to share, was that the angel of the Lord was telling me, shout this message for all to hear. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. My love for you, my love for you is passionate and strong. God said his love for you is passionate and strong. And strong. Why? Because you're valuable to him. You mean the world to him. 
And we get that in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. He doesn't say God was so frustrated, annoyed, and ticked off at the world that he sent his one and only son. He said God so loved the world. God so loved you that he sent his one and only son for you. Because he knew that we weren't going to live a perfect, blameless, perfectly holy, righteous life. He knew that wasn't going to be done by us. That's why he sent his son to do it. So that he could be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins and for our shortcomings. So that we could be washed and made new into a new creation in Christ. So that he could give us a fresh start and a new beginning. That he could take that crimson stain of sin and he can wash us white as snow. No matter what you have done in your past relationships, no matter what addictions you may have picked up, that God will make you new. You just have to turn to him. Repent. It's the, in the Beatitudes, Jesus opens by saying, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Why? Because they're broken down and realizing they can't do it on their own. And they're never going to be good enough on their own. Those are the people that are blessed. Why? Because they turn to the Lord. And then he says, blessed are those who mourn over their sin. It's this idea of mourning and realizing, wow, I fell short of the glory of God. Why? Because I was deceived and I didn't know who I was. I didn't know the value that was on my life. I didn't know the truth of God's word. I didn't know the power of his testimony. Those are the people that are blessed. And so... I want to end this video with this quote from a friend of mine, Julian Lowe, who said that truth must be accompanied with belief in order for it to be empowered in your life. He said that both truth and lies can be empowered with belief. Is that if you believe a lie, it becomes empowered in your life, which so many of us have. And we've got to disassemble and break down and retract the belief in that lie. And we've got to attach our belief to the truth and empower that in our life. So if you've believed anything about being insecure, invaluable, worthless, then you've got to break that down and cast it out and cut the ties, the bondage of those lies and believe the truth that you are valuable that God loves you, that his image is upon you. And when you attach belief in that, that's when it gets empowered in your life. And that's the, the, the struggle is that I can read these scriptures over and over and over again. I can be as excited as I want about these scriptures. And I can try to, and I can want to believe them for you. But if you don't believe them for yourself, They'll never be empowered in your life. So get alone with God. Meditate upon his word and his truth for you and his value. And when you recognize that value, that's where your boundaries are going to spill over from. Your boundaries are going to come from that place of value. Wow, I now know who I am in Christ. I know that my body is the temple of a living God. That I know I have something that's worth protecting. Not just for myself, not just for God, but for my future spouse. And because of this, this holistic influence of honoring myself, God, my future spouse, that's where these boundaries become so clear and so uh, ingrained in us and we remain steadfast and firm. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray, God, that this just planted a seed that is watered about who they are, that they would believe more and more and more of your truth and who you made them to be and who you're calling them to be. Lord, that they are a precious child of God and that that truth would be deeply embedded in their heart. And the, and the reading of your word and the prayer and intimacy with you is going to continue to water and water and water that seed. And it's going to grow into abundance and revolutionize their identity, their walk, and their perspective. And I pray for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.